Welcome back everyone to our part two in the video series on solving logarithmic equations. Here we are working with log equations where we have more than one logarithm in the equation. For our first one here we have log base 6 of x plus log base 6 of x minus 1 equals 1. Now we at least have the same base in two separate logs, so we should be able to do some combining of logs when we have separate logs and add or subtract between logs. Remember a property of logs is when we have two separate logs of the same base and addition between them, we should be able to combine those into a single log and multiply what's inside the two separate logs. So if we combine these together, condense the log terms into one, then it'll be a single log six term. And what we'll have inside of that will be this x times this x minus one here. So we'll have log base six of x times x minus one all in a single log equal to one. Now we have it all in one log term. And to figure out how to solve for x, I would need to get rid of this log base six on the outside of this expression. That's what's happening to x times x minus one. So to get at those, I need to get rid of log base six. Remember that the opposite operation of log base 6 will be an exponential base 6, like we talked about in the last video. So we'll take exponential base 6 of both sides. Exponential base 6 and log 6 are inverses. They're opposite operations. They undo one another. So we'll just be left with x times x minus 1 on the left side. And we can just compute 6 to the first power. 6 to the 1 will just be 6 on the right side. We cannot set factors equal to zero here because we have a six on the other side. So we'll need to distribute this and get everything equal to zero. So if I distribute my x, I will get x squared minus x equal to six. And you might be able to see now, if I move everything to the left side, this is factorable. So if I subtract six on both sides, I will get x squared minus x minus six equal to zero. And then this is factorable. Right? If I factor this quadratic, this trinomial, I'll need an x and an x, and I'll need things that multiply to get negative 6 and add to get negative 1. And if you think about it for a minute, you'll get that one of the factors is x minus 3, and the other factor is x plus 2. So I have factors x minus 3 and x plus 2 equal to 0. So we say x minus 3 equals 0, and we say x plus 2 equals 0. Here I just need to add 3 to both sides, that will give me that x equals 3. Here I subtract 2 from both sides, that will give me that x equals negative 2. Remember that when we solve a log equation, we need to take our answers and put them back into the original statement and make sure that we don't have any domain problems. Remember that we can only take logarithms of positive numbers. So if I go back and I insert x equals 3 into my original equation, I will have log base 6 of 3 plus log base 6 of 2 equals 1. Log of a positive, log of a positive, we're good there, so we can say that x equals 3 is an answer. If I go back and plug in negative 2, so I try x equals negative 2, in my original I have log base 6 of negative 2 plus log base 6 of negative 3 equals 1. And the problem is I can't take a log of a negative. So I have two problems, right? Even if I just had one of them being log of a negative, then that's a problem. But I actually have a double problem here. So this is a no good solution here. We will go ahead and say that's not one of our answers. It doesn't check out. And x equals 3 is our only actual solution for this first problem. Looking at another here, we have log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of x minus 8 equals 2. So we look at addition between logs and we think about condensing into a single log term. Remember that add between logs becomes multiply in one log. So I have a log base 3, a single term. I multiply what's in these logs. So I'll have x times x minus 8 is equal to 2. Now I have log base 3 of all this stuff equal to 2. I need to get rid of the log 3 so I can get at solving this part here. I need to undo log base 3. The opposite operation is exponential base 3. Remember that exponentials and logs with the same base are opposite operations. So exponential base 3 and log base 3 are inverses. We get rid of the log 3 in that way. So we end up with x times x minus 8 is equal to 3 squared, which is 9. I'll go ahead and distribute and move everything to the same side like we did in the last one. So x times x gives us x squared. 
x times negative 8 will get negative 8x equal to 9. I'll need to move the 9 over by subtracting to the other side. We will get x squared minus 8x minus 9 equal to 0. From here, I need to solve for x. I think about factoring this. Can I factor this? And I can. This is factorable. I've set it up on purpose that way for you so we can get some practice. So we need things that multiply to get negative 9 that add to get negative 8. And the numbers that work for that are negative 9 and positive 1. So we have x minus 9 times x plus 1 equals 0. We can now take each of those factors and set them equal to 0 and solve. So x minus 9 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. Solving, I would add 9 to both sides here. I get that x equals 9 as a possible answer. Subtracting 1 here on both sides, I get that x equals negative 1 is a possible answer for this equation. Let's go back and check. So if we check x equal 9, plugging into the original, then we would get log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of 9 minus 8 would still be positive 1. So we are okay here because we're taking the log of a positive and the log of a positive. This is a good answer. So we'll go ahead and say yes, x equals 9 is good. Let's check negative 1. So if we check x equals negative 1 and look at that, we will have in the original log 3 of, you can see it right away, negative 1. We don't even need to go any further. We're still going to get another negative, but this is enough to say no. This is not okay. I can't take log base 3 of negative 1. So this is not a good answer. X equals 9 is our only solution for this one. Let's look at another. We have log of x plus log of x plus 3. Notice we have no base written, so we assume base 10 when there's no base written. But our addition between logs we know is our product rule for logs, so we can put these in the same log, still base 10, and we can multiply the insides of those logs. So we get log of x times x plus 3, all of that in our log base 10, equal to 1. Now remember this is log base 10, so an opposite operation of log base 10 will be an exponential base 10. So we take exponential base 10 of both sides. 10 to the power of log 10 is going to reduce, and we'll get just x times x plus 3 over here, and 10 to the power 1 gives us 10. Distributing like we did before, we'll get x squared plus 3x equal to 10. And then if I think about trying to factor this, I'll need to subtract my 10 on both sides, get that over on the left as x squared plus 3x minus 10 equal to 0. Okay, we go ahead and see if we can factor this. We would need things that multiply to give us negative 10 and add to give us positive 3. And if we think about it for a second, we might come up with the answer that we have positive 5 and negative 2. So x plus 5 times x minus 2 equals 0. That's our factored form. So take each factor and set it equal to 0. x plus 5 equals 0 and x minus 2 equal to 0. And now if I subtract 5 from both sides on this left one, I will get negative 5 as a possible solution. And if I add 2 on this side, I will get x equals 2 as a possible solution. If I go ahead and try to plug these back into the originals, plugging in negative 5, so check x equals negative 5. If I plug that in, I would get log of, right away I can see, taking log of a negative in this first term. So I already know whether I have anything good in the second one or not. We've already violated the rules of logarithms. So x equals negative 5 is not an answer. Let's check x equals positive 2. If we take x equals 2 and we put it into the original, that would be log of 2 plus log of 2 plus 3 would still be positive 5. And so we're good here. I have log of a positive, and I have log of a positive, and that's what we want. So that's a good one there, and we'll say our answer is just x equals 2 for this one. Looking at one more here, I have log base 2 of x plus 1 minus log base 2 of x minus 2 equals 2. I have subtract between my logs in this one, so this one's a little bit different. This is a quotient rule for logs. Remember, subtract between logarithms will become divide when we put it in the same log. So if I want to put these in the same log, I will have log still base 2, and the first 
expression will be on the top of the fraction, x plus 1. The bottom, x minus 2, will be on the bottom of the fraction. So we get log 2 of x plus 1 over x minus 2 equals the number 2. And now I'll need to get rid of this logarithm still, log base 2. To get rid of that, the inverse operation would be exponential base 2. So we take 2 to the power of both sides. Base 2 exponential and log base 2 reduce. We get x plus 1 over x minus 2 equals 2 to the second power. 2 squared will give us 4. What we might do next to solve this rational equation is to get rid of the denominator. So we might go ahead and multiply both sides by x minus 2 to get rid of a denominator so we don't have a fraction to deal with there anymore. So if we go ahead and multiply both sides by x minus 2, then we will get that x plus 1 on the left side is equal to, can we distribute here? Let's go ahead and do it, 4x minus 8. Okay, I go ahead and get my x's together and my not x's together. Let's say I subtract x from both sides, then that would give me 1 is equal to 3x minus 8. And then if I add 8 to both sides, then I will get 9 is equal to 3x, and then we'll need to divide by 3 on both sides. So my only possible answer for this one I need to check is that x equals 3. So if we go back and think about in the original, if I plug in 3 here, that would give me log of 4, and that's okay. And if I plug in 3 here, that would give me a log of 3 minus 2, which would still be a positive 1. And so our answer checks out. This x equals 3 is a good thing. We can use it as an answer. Okay, everybody, hopefully that helps you with condensing your logarithms into a single logarithm, solving your logarithmic equations that have more than one log in them. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.